All right, it is noon by my clock, so we're going to get started uh, with today's webinar. My name is Brooks Ballard, and I'm with the Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living here at the UT School of Public Health, and I'm the organizer for today's webinar. Uh, I just want to cover a little bit of housekeeping for today before we hand things over to our presenters. First of all, I'll answer the single most popular question we get for all of our webinars, and that's yes, we are recording this webinar, and we will make the archive and a PDF of the presentation slides available on our center's website, msdcenter.com. Dot org later this week. Uh, we do want to hear other questions from you though today and you can type those in as some of you already have uh, using the questions control panel. Uh, we encourage you to type in your questions at any time throughout the presentation but to keep us on schedule we'll hold off on answering them until the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. If you have any technical issues today you can also type those into the questions box and I'll do my best to troubleshoot any problems with you. Next, I want to just tell you guys a little bit about the Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living. Uh, we're an international leader in conducting research and providing programs that promote healthy living for children, their families, and communities. Our mission is to advance health and healthy living for children and families through innovative research, cutting-edge community-based programs, and dissemination of evidence-based practices. Our vision is healthy children and a healthy world. You can learn more and, like I said, access the, the webinar archives uh, at msdcenter.org. Now, I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Courtney Bird-Williams, who's one of our faculty members here at the Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living and an assistant professor at the UT School of Public Health. Dr. Bird-Williams? Thanks, Brooks. As Brooks mentioned, my name is Courtney Bird-Williams. I'm an assistant professor here at UT School of Public Health. Today I am delighted to introduce Julie Stagg, the State Breastfeeding Coordinator at the Department of State Health Services, or DSHS. Today she'll be, she'll be describing the Texas Mother-Friendly Worksite Program. She and our team uh, at DSHS developed the Texas Mother-Friendly Worksite Program to encourage and recognize employers across the state who have policies and practices in place to support worksite lactation. And to date, over 2,000 worksites have been designated. So recently, the Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living at the UT School of Public Health has joined the Texas Mother Friendly Worksite team, and we are excited to be providing technical assistance and support to employers who would like to become designated. So thank you for joining us today, and now I'll turn it over to Julie. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to uh, have the opportunity to speak with y'all today. As Courtney said, um, I'm Julie Stagg. I'm the State Breastfeeding Coordinator and Women's and at the Texas Department of State Health Services. Um, today we will be um, talking about um, why uh, supporting breastfeeding in the workplace is good for families and good for business, what state and federal policies have to say about working in breastfeeding, the resources that are available to help you develop a worksite breastfeeding support policy, and how your worksite can become recognized as a Texas mother-friendly worksite. So um, to begin the conversation, we'll talk about why workplace support of breastfeeding is good for families and good for business. Returning to work is the leading barrier to breastfeeding among working mothers. Uh, the majority of mothers with infants under one are in the U.S. labor force, 57% um, in 2013. Um, and among those mothers, the number one reason for never breastfeeding is the need to return to work. And for women who do, who, working women who do initiate breastfeeding, return to work is the leading reason for weaning early or for discontinuing breastfeeding. 58% um, of women in our Texas WIC program, the Women, Infant, and Children Nutrition um, Services Program, report that return to work is the um, re leading reason that they did not meet their own breastfeeding goals. So um, there's an easy solution to uh, meet the needs of these families so that they can meet their breastfeeding goals and uh, can continue to breastfeed. And uh, that is the solutions that come through worksite lactation support. So what is worksite lactation support? Um, it's just basic arrangements that allow mothers to comfortably express breast milk during the workday and store that milk safely when they're separated from their babies during the workday. There are many benefits to businesses who implement worksite lactation support. Um, 
there's an immediate return on investment for employers uh, because breastfeeding employees miss work less often um, due to illness and their children, less illness in their children. So both mothers and fathers um, are at work more often and absent less often uh, if babies are breastfed. There's also a lower turnover rate among um, employees if breastfeeding is supported in the work site. Um, employees are more likely to return to work to the same employer after childbirth. They're more likely to return from leave sooner and they're more likely to remain in that same job longer. Breastfeeding support in the workplace also supports uh, productivity and loyalty. Um, employees report improved morale, better satisfaction with their jobs, and higher productivity. Uh, women who have their needs met in the workplace are able to focus on their job duties, um, taking the simple um, time that they need uh, to take care of their physical needs and get back to work. Um, and male employees also report higher loyalty and increased satisfaction with their jobs in businesses that have worksite lactation support programs. Um, support of breastfeeding lowers healthcare costs, which can result in cost savings for employers as well. Um, so there's reduced healthcare costs for breastfed infants. Um, which translate into lower medical insurance claims for businesses. And in the long term, there are also uh, reduced health care um, costs for, for female employees through reduced um, cardiovascular disease and reduced um, cancer. So worksite lactation support is family friendly and Texas friendly. Uh, mother friendly worksites contribute to the health of an entire population by ensuring healthier mothers and babies. Um, and this means for employers both, as I mentioned, immediate returns on investment, but also the long term investment in the workforce um, in their community. So um, um, there will be uh, children who are ready to learn um, and healthier children that grow into healthier adults that can form your future workforce. To talk a little bit more about the public health impact of supporting breastfeeding, um, children who are breastfed, breastfeeding protects against infection including ear infection, gastrointestinal infection, respiratory infection, um, as well as long-term outcomes um, like reduction of uh, diabetes, leukemia, obesity, allergic disease, and asthma. And uh, for children who are born preterm, it protects them against necrotizing enterocolitis, which is a um, dangerous and often fatal disease of the preterm infant, as well as protection against sudden infant death syndrome in, in all infants. Um, mothers who breastfeed are at reduced risk for cardiovascular disease, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type 2 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, they're more likely to um, return to a stable pre-pregnancy weight and to maintain a healthy weight. Um, and also uh, breastfeeding is the natural conclusion of the reproductive cycle and helps mothers recover more quickly um, from pregnancy. So um, back to worksite lactation. Uh, worksite lactation programs are simple, easy, and affordable. There are many, many different um, options for worksite lactation programs so that they can meet the needs of both the employer and the employee in any work setting. Uh, they're not prescriptive. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to provide support in any setting. With a little creativity and commitment, supportive environments can be created in your work settings. So what do state and federal policies have to say about working and breastfeeding? In 2010, with the passage of um, the Affordable Care Act, the Fair Labor Standards Act was amended to require employers to provide uh, both a reasonable break time for employees to express breast milk 
um, for nursing children for one year after that child's birth each time an employee has a need to express breast milk during the workday. Um, and the, though the time doesn't have to be paid, um, if the employer does provide breaks already, that, that time um, can be used for uh, lactation breaks. The law also um, requires that employers provide a place other than a bathroom that is shielded from view and free from intrusion from coworkers and the public um, that can be used for the purpose mm -hmm. to express breast milk. This doesn't have to be dedicated space. There are many space options that would meet these requirements as long as that uh, space is not a bathroom and it is um, protected from intrusion and from view of others during the time that the employee is using this space. Um, the U.S. Department of Labor is the, um, the department that is charged with implementing this requirement under the Fair Labor Standards Act, and they have a wealth of resources available on their website. They have a web page that's dedicated to uh, this component of the Fair Labor Standards Act. So if you just Google uh, DOL and break time for nursing mothers, you will come to this page, but the URL is provided here. Um, and any questions about this federal law should be directed to the U.S. Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division um, at their phone number or their website. Um, the placement of this law is in the overtime component of the Fair Labor Standards Act, and so it is. Um, it only applies to hourly wage earners or those employees who are eligible for overtime. There is other federal guidance from the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And in um, July of last year, the EEOC clarified their policy related to pregnancy discrimination. And they have updated their website with information about this new guidance. Um, and in that guidance, they state um, that lactation is a pregnancy-related medical condi condition, and so less favorable treatment of any lactating employee may raise an inference of unlawful discrimination. Um, those employees must have the same freedom to address lactation-related needs that she and her coworkers would have to address any other uh, similar, uh, similarly limiting medical condition. Um, so if break time is allowed for one type of medical condition or leave is allowed or special um, physical accommodations are, are allowed, then they should also be allowed for the purpose of lactation. And uh, the guidance states that less fav favorable treatment affects only women and therefore is facially sex-based. In Texas, we also have policy related to worksite lactation support. Um, in 1995, Texas Health and Safety Code established the mother-friendly business designation through Health and Safety Code 165 breastfeeding. Um, this code also affirmed a woman's right to breastfeed in any location in which she's authorized to be, which is not directly related to worksite lactation, but is important to consider as you're looking at your policies in your work site um, for your own employees, you might want to also look at policies related to how you handle uh, public uh, members of the public who might be in your establishment and, and breastfeed so that your staff are educated that they do have a right to breastfeed in any location where they're authorized to be. Um, the bill also charged my agency, Department of State Health Services, to create a model policy for the mother-friendly worksite program and to create the registry of businesses. Um, most recently, in this last legislation, a legislative session, uh, the Texas legislature um, revised government code 619 to create the right to express breast milk in the workplace um, for public employers, and it charges public employers to develop written policy on the expression of breast milk by employees 
um, and that the policy should state um, that the public employer will support the practice of expressing breast milk and make reasonable accommodations for the needs of employees who express breast milk. Um, this includes uh, requirements to outline responsive, or the bill goes on to outline responsibilities of employers and also prohibits discrimination as well as specifies what public employers are uh, bound to this requirement and that list is here um, including county, municipality, or other political subdivisions of the state including school districts um, and, and many other um, subdivisions of the state. So what resources are available to help you develop a worksite breastfeeding support policy? Um, there are many employers, if you, if you don't already have a, a policy established, there are many employers who have paved the road for you. Um, and through work with um, employers, including public employers, um, we've developed a toolkit that can be referred to um, to help you with any challenges you might have related to this process. Now I want to make it clear that the toolkit that um, is here at texasmotherfriendly.org contains more information than you might need uh, to establish a policy. You're not required to go through each one of these steps in order to be designated as mother friendly, but these steps will help you to develop a policy that is effective and sustainable in any setting. Um, and so there are tools um, across these steps to help you uh, meet your needs in your setting. Um, so we have talking points um, under this uh, step one, get people on board. There, there are talking points about the business case, about the public health case, um, and about why worksite lactation support is important. Um, we have information about who you might need to have at your table in order to effectively establish a policy, and then templates and resources to help you gather those people around your table and um, work together on developing a policy. We do recommend that you um, you do some kind of assessment on your needs in your worksite, talk to your employees, talk to your managers um, to find out what currently is in place and how well it's working um, and what else you might need to do to address the needs of your lactating, of your breastfeeding employees and also their partners. Um, worksite lactation programs can include both your female employees as well as your male employees um, because um, the many male employees will have partners who are who are breastfeeding and if you include dads in this uh, program you're going to have more buy-in and you're also going to have a better return on your investment where um, if you provide education for example to uh, male employees um, to share with their partners um, then uh, you will see increased breastfeeding and less absenteeism in your male employees um, we have tools for developing your policy, um, including templates, uh, model policies from other employers, um, and guidance on what elements are required in a policy. Uh, we have tools for implementing uh, your policy, so um, helping you to identify what you might need for space, for time, for education and support and then tools to um, evaluate your program after it's been developed to make sure that it's meeting the needs of your employees and um, that what you had planned is going um, along in the way that you had hoped that it would. We also have tools to help you communicate your policy um, with your uh, employees, with your managers, and with the public as well to promote um, in your community that you are mother friendly. Um, so if you have any questions, chances are that it, they're addressed somewhere here on this website. Um, so um, that toolkit uh, is what I just walked through. Um, so that toolkit's available online for you. There's also 
uh, real uh, contact available um, for technical assistance and support um, here through um, UT School of Public Health. And once you have implemented a policy, your work site can be recognized for um, being a mother-friendly work site. We also have tools for you once you have been designated to help um, promote breastfeeding with your employees and provide education uh, at no cost to you. So through Department of State Health Services, we have resources like breastmilkcounts.com, which is our one-stop breastfeeding resource online. And we have um, printed literature and other resources that are available to you and to your employees. Um, if you're interested in promoting the mother-friendly designation and worksite lactation support to other employers in your community, we also have an outreach partner toolkit that has um, sample press releases, talking points, PowerPoint templates, and a, um, a guide to help you figure out how to approach um, employers um, and in, a, in a simple way. Um, to recruit them toward this goal. Um, the Mother Friendly Worksite program and um, the uh, components of the program have been nationally recognized as a practice-tested intervention um, for obesity prevention by the Center for Training and Research Translation funded by the CDC. So to dive a little deeper into resources that are available at texasmotherfriendly.org, under the Develop a Policy page, um, I wanted to point out that there is a um, kind of a Policy 101 uh, PowerPoint called Developing Your Policy, and that's available for download that will walk you step by step. Um, through why and how to develop a mother-friendly worksite policy. And then there are also sample policies, as I um, stated earlier, that are available here under the Texas Mother-Friendly Worksite Policy Guidance, condensed. And that's the one that I recommend that you refer to. This document includes the basic requirements of you walk step-by-step -step through what your work site is like and what space um, options might be available to you in that setting. Um, and as I said, any setting can uh, meet the requirements for providing a space. Uh, whether that is a um, employee that works out in a field or um, in a corporate setting, there is an option for you. There's also um, best practices and tried and true strategies for providing uh, schedule, meeting scheduling needs and providing other flexible scheduling options and for providing education and support for employees. So these are, those are all tools that can help you develop a supportive lactation policy and program. Um, so what does it take to become recognized as a Texas mother-friendly work site? It's very easy. Uh, to become recognized as a Texas mother-friendly work site, all that's required is to establish a policy that meets some very basic criteria, um, apply for designation, and then after that policy is reviewed and confirmed to meet the minimum criteria, then your work site can be recognized, listed on our website, and provided with lots of resources to support you in implementing that policy. So um, what are the policy requirements? To become designated as a Texas mother-friendly work site, an employer has to establish a policy that supports the practice of work site breastfeeding by addressing the following. The policy should address work schedule flexibility, including scheduling breaks and work patterns to provide time for expression of breast milk, um, providing accessible locations allowing privacy, spaces that are not a bathroom, um, that are free from view and intrusion of the public and coworkers. 
Um, the policy also needs to provide for access to a nearby clean, safe water source and a sink for washing hands and rinsing out any needed breast pump equipment. So this sink um, does not need to be in the lactation space and it doesn't uh, necessarily even have to have running water um, as long as there's clean, safe water available. So for employees that are working out in a field, for example, if um, there is not plumbing around, then providing a clean, safe water source and a wash tub uh, to meet these, these criteria is acceptable. Obviously, in a, in a brick-and-mortar building, a sink would be preferred, <laughs> um, but that can be a sink in a bathroom or a break room or somewhere nearby. Um, and ideally, you know, if you have a dedicated lactation space, it, it can be in that lactation space as well. Um, the policy also has to provide for access to hygienic storage alternatives in the workplace for the mother's breast milk. Now this does not necessarily mean that a refrigerator has to be provided, although that certainly is provided in many settings. Um, this can mean a dedicated refrigerator for, for mother's breast milk. It could be the refrigerator in a break room. Um, and breast milk is not considered a biohazard, it's considered a food by both OSHA and FDA. So there's no special handling or um, isolation uh, required for breast milk. It could be stored next to somebody else's lunch because it's baby's lunch. Um, this could also be mother's own cooler that she provides herself or an employee, employer provided cooler. Um, what is required is that there's a safe, clean place um, available on the work site for her to store her milk. So if the setting is um, a chemical factory, for example, um, then there needs to be a space that's not hazardous or not too hot or whatever where that milk can be stored. So once a policy is established, um, then... Uh, the next step is for the employer to apply. Um, the designation is given on a site-by-site -site basis, so you may have many, many work sites and one policy that covers all of those work sites. We do need an application for each work site, um, but the online form makes that easy. Um, to apply, you just go online to texasmotherfriendly.org and click on the apply button and um, you'll just want to have your policy close by. Um, you will answer a few questions about your policy that really are about how your policy meets this, the steps that I just talked about as well as how you communicate the policy to your employees. And then um, if you want to be uh, if you want additional recogni recognition for doing more, like paid maternity leave or child care at work, uh, those kinds of things, if you have a very enhanced program, you might be eligible for additional recognition. So you would want to have information about any of those things with you as well. Um, and then you just, um, you can post your policy online um, and apply online. If you are applying for many, many work sites, the uh, form will be pre-populated with the information you already provided, um, except for a few fields that would be unique to that work site. So it's easy to fill the application out for more than one site. If you have a long list of work sites and you would like some help with that, then help is available. You would just need to email us and let us know. So once you're designated, um, there are some perks for you. Um, once you have uh, been designated as a Texas Mother Friendly Worksite, you can hold yourself out in your community as a Mother Friendly Worksite. Um, you can use the logo, the title, um, the sample press releases that are available to you uh, to tout your accomplishment as um, being Mother Friendly. Um, you'll also receive a certificate and um, window cleans and other resources to promote your achievement. Um, 
as well as all the tools that I've already told you about to be able to communicate your policy to your employees and to the community. And then you'll be listed online at the, in the directory at texasmotherfriendly.org. So um, we have whole municipalities that have passed these policies. Um, so congratulations to the cities of Austin, San Antonio, and Edinburgh on being mother friendly. Um, we've got several other cities and counties working towards this um, designation. And uh, we'd hope for every city and county in the state of Texas to receive this. Okay, um, thank you so much for the presentation, Julie. At this point, we're going to move on to the, the Q&A portion here. Uh, once again, just uh, to reiterate, we uh, did record this webinar, and it's going to be available online at msdcenter.org. And just uh, to remind you where you can type in your questions, you, you should see a little questions box in your GoToWebinar panel um, on your screen, and you can just type those in there, and we will go through them. We have um, a, a few that have come in so far, and um, we're going to have Carmen here Go ahead and uh, moderate with Julie. Hi, I'm Carmen, and I am moderating your questions today. Uh, the first question uh, comes from Terrence Attis, and the question is, do all work sites within a company's operation need to have accommodating accommodations to, for breastfeeding in order for the company to achieve Texas mother-friendly status? So that's a great question, and I assume by accommodations that you're referring to space and a dedicated lactation room. Um, and if that is what your question refers to, then the answer is no. Um, what is required is that you have a policy that states that you will provide that when needed. So um, using the tools that are available or or whatever process you have um, established in your setting uh, to determine where you um, need dedicated lactation spaces is recommended. And obviously uh, some sites will be more likely to need a space that's up and running all the time for the purpose of, uh, of um, accommodating employees. But if you have sites where you don't have a, lo a lot of female employees of childbearing age or it's intermittent um, when people might need to use those accommodations, um, flexible accommodations are perfectly acceptable. So as long as you have a plan in place for providing that space when it is required, um, that's all that's needed to be designated. You just, you need to have a policy that states that you will provide it and a plan in place to provide it. All right, next question comes from Deborah Warren, and the question is, once a site receives the designation, does it require that the site be recertified after so many years? Um, so currently, uh, or and in the past, we haven't had a redesignation process, but we are will be implementing a redesignation process, um, and the plan is for there to be redesignation every two years, and it will be a very simple process where we will just um, ask for you to verify that your policy is still in place, um, and. Uh, and that's it. And then at that time, if you want to consider being designated a silver or gold level, if you, maybe you've added some additional features, you'd have an opportunity to do that at that time. All right. Deborah Warren asked another question. She asked, is there any cost for designation? No, uh, there's no cost for designation. Uh, this is a program of the Department of State Health Services, and the, and the goal of it is to um, encourage uh, employers to proactively support their employees with, with breastfeeding. So there's no cost involved. We also have networked with other states and will um, we'll at some point soon have a listing of similar programs in other states. So if you're, uh, you're an employer with businesses, with work sites across state lines, um, we will uh, be making available similar recognition programs of, um, in other states to help you get that recognition wherever you can. All right, Pam Armstrong asks, if the toilet is removed, can a bathroom be changed into a mother-friendly space? 
as long as it's not actively functioning as, as a bathroom and it doesn't have bathroom features in it, um, then that should meet criteria. Um, and we do go by the criteria provided by U.S. Department of Labor for space. U.S. Department of Labor has a very comprehensive um, document that details what they're currently um, ass assessing space by, the criteria that they're currently assessing space by, and that is um, something that we could post along with this webinar. Um, but if you go to that U.S. Department of Labor website that I uh, referred to earlier, there's a document that's called a request for information, and that, that document was used to outline uh, the criteria that U.S. Department of Labor is considering as the standard for now. All right, Fancy Jordy asks, how does a whole city or county become designated mother-friendly? So it's for the city as an employer, for the municipality or the county as an employer, um, if they pass a... Uh, citywide or countywide, um, I guess it's municipality level um, policy that applies to all of their employees in all of the city um, work sites, then um, they can submit that along with a listing of their work sites and um, be considered for designation. Same with counties. Astrid Lara asks, all designated areas must be in ADA Compliance? Uh, if there's, so the question is, I guess, about lactation rooms. Do lactation rooms have to be ADA compliant? Um, and I would imagine that the U.S. Department of Labor would say yes, that if, if a person with a wheelchair were using that space, then they would need to meet criteria for um, ADA. However, the mother friendly policy. Um, doesn't have to specify ADA compliance. That's really a, you know, that's a labor law issue rather than a mother-friendly worksite um, issue. As I said before, we don't require that there be dedicated space to be considered for designation as mother-friendly, only that an, a suitable space will be provided. And a suitable space would imply that it's also ADA accessible for employees that need that all right, Ann Millard asks, do students have the right to have a baby in a classroom during class to be able to breastfeed? Um, so the mother-friendly worksite designation applies only to the employer-employee relationship. It does not apply to uh, members of the public or in school settings to students. Um, so that's outside of the scope of, of this webinar. Um, Ann Millard also asks, is the city of Edinburgh a mother-friendly worksite? Is there also a different designation for a city that is broader? So the city of Edinburgh has adopted a mother-friendly policy for all of their work sites, and so every city office and work site is designated as a mother-friendly work site. Um, and I I'm afraid I might not understand the other part of the question. Um, there's no other designation provided through the Mother Friendly Program for, for cities or counties. It's only a, it's an employer designation. All right. Paula Botsford asks, when will the gold and silver recognition requirements be posted to help with future policy planning for the redesignation that was mentioned? Um, that information is available um, online, and we can also send it to you. Um, the criteria for, for silver and gold are already established. They were established in 2011, I believe, and are available now. So um, we can certainly provide more information about that when we post this webinar. Okay, uh, we're gonna, running a little low on time, so we're going to go ahead and stop there. Um, if you plugged in a question, we will do our best to um, get back in touch with you either via email or, as we mentioned here, we're going to um, be doing uh, some follow-up follow blog with answers to some of the questions 
um, at the msdcenter.blogspot.com website. All of that's accessible through msdcenter.org. Um, again, we've got a note here. If you have questions, please email um, info at texasmotherfriendly.org. Uh, we thank you so much for attending today, and uh, the, the archive should be up uh, a little later this week. Thanks so much.